Welcome to Know Your Universe, where we fill you in on all the important details and fun facts about your favorite characters. Today we're going to talk about Ant-Man. Well, Ant-Men, four to be exact. They all have the same power set, to shrink down to the size of an ant and talk to ants. So because of this, we're going to explain how each one of them took the title of Ant-Man and just a little bit about them. First up, we have Hank Pym, the father of shrinking technology in the Marvel Universe. Probably the most famous out of all of the Ant-Men, this is the one that most people think about. He debuted in Tales to Astonish number 27 in a story titled The Man on the Ant Hill. It was originally conceived by Stan Lee as a single one-off story about a man that could shrink down and outrun bees and ants. But it did so well that he quickly got his own series. But that series never really took off, but Hank Pym was considered such an interesting character that he was ramped up into the Avengers in 1963. Stan Lee had the idea that the reason why Ant-Man never took off was because the artists didn't know how to draw him. They kept forgetting to put things next to him to show his size, such as the cover to a matchbook. So all the potential readers just saw him as another guy in his underwear. As for the character's history, he was a biochemist that invented something called Pym Particles. These Pym Particles allowed people to shrink and grow. Thinking that this technology would be too dangerous, he destroyed it, only to recreate it soon afterwards because he wanted to study ants. In his studies with ants, he decided to create his own ant helmet that would allow him to speak to them. He was then eventually contacted by Dr. Vernon for help in contacting alien life, but Hank turned him down. In his visits to the doctor's lab, though, Hank became attracted to his daughter, Janet Van Dyne. Dr. Vernon was eventually killed off by the alien life that he was contacting, and Janet asks Hank for help in avenging her father. He explains that he is secretly the superhero Ant-Man and he gives her some of the Pym particles and then he grafts wasps wings to her, allowing her to become a wasp when she shrinks down. They then go on to defeat the aliens that killed her father and then they become founding members of the superhero team Avengers. Maybe you've heard of them. Hank quickly ditches the Ant-Man identity though and becomes a new superhero Giant Man because he felt that being Ant-Man made him inadequate next to people like Thor and Iron Man. His story then continues from there with him ditching Giant Man to become Goliath, Yellow Jacket, Wasp, and even the Scientist Supreme. He also does some shady things like creating Ultron and hitting his wife. But this isn't a Hank Pym Know Your Universe, this is an Ant-Man Know Your Universe. So let's move on to the second Ant-Man. Scott Lang came up second, and he's the guy that's in the movie. He was a thief that was caught and placed into prison, but he was released on parole for good behavior and got a job working for Tony Stark handling all of the security for the Avengers Mansion. Eventually, his daughter Cassie Lang became ill with a rare heart condition, and after looking for any answer he could to help her, he only found one doctor that could save her. But this doctor had recently been kidnapped by a local villain. So Scott broke into Hank's lab and stole the original Ant-Man costume, allowing him to shrink down and sneak into the villain's base, where he defeats the villain and saves the doctor. The doctor is then able to save his daughter, and he goes on to return the costume and accept his punishment from Hank, but Hank tells him that he had the right reasons for taking it, and the world could always use another superhero. Scott Lang kind of fell into obscurity after that, and he eventually joined the B-String for the Avengers and eventually the Fantastic Four. But he was killed off by a fake zombified Jack of Hearts at the start of the storyline, Avengers Disassembled. And then due to a time travel storyline, they went back to just before his death, removed him from the timeline, and brought him back to the future. After that, Doctor Doom killed Cassie Lang, and Scott went on a mission to enact his revenge against Doctor Doom, only to have the Axis event reverse the whole thing so that both Scott and Cassie are still around. Our third Ant-Man is a bit of an underground favorite known as Eric O'Grady. He's a low-level S.H.I.E.L.D. agent that stumbled across Hank Pym's Ant-Man suit that was being kept in the S.H.I.E.L.D. headquarters. He stole it, planning to use it to get ahead in life and pretending to be a superhero so that he could stalk women and steal things. The character is known for wanting to be accepted by others, which forces him to do the right thing and then vow to be a proper superhero only to eventually relapse into being a jerk and then realize that he wants to be a superhero again. After his own solo run, he eventually was rolled up into the initiative and continued from there working with various other teams. The fun thing about this character and the reason why so many people like him is that he was actually created by Robert Kirkman, the guy that created The Walking Dead. Sal over at Comic Pop actually did a fun back issues on the entire irredeemable Ant-Man run over at his channel and we'll put the link to it on the screen right now. Our fourth and the least known of the Ant-Men is Chris McCarthy. Technically, he never got his own comic or anything and is a part of Eric O'Grady's origin. Eric and Chris were friends and they were tasked with guarding Hank Pym's lab. During a siege by Hydra, Chris stole the suit because he was panicking and he put it on. But not understanding how it worked, he found himself stuck at the height of one inch and wandering around the shield helicarrier. He wore the suit until he was eventually killed by Hydra, and then Eric takes the suit off of his dead friend to eventually become the irredeemable Ant-Man that he would become. 
And that's it. That is some very brief information on the four men who have worn the Ant-Man costume. Oh, and there's another man named Mitch Carson that was supposed to get the Ant-Man costume, the one that Eric O'Grady stole. But since Eric O'Grady stole it, Mitch Carson didn't get it, got injured, and became a villain for Eric. Thank you for joining us for this video today, and I hope this explains a few things for you. If you like it, please give this video a like. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter, at Comic Story, and if you want to chat, and check out these other great videos, you just might like them. I'm Benny for Comic Story, and I will see you guys next time, right here.